Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. Today I am going to be sharing with you my favourite historical fiction novels. So while this is obviously my recommendation video to you, I would also love for you to recommend some historical fiction novels to me because I would love to read some more of the genre. It is one of my favourites but I definitely don't own enough historical fiction novels and I haven't read enough but when I do read it I love it. So please comment down below your favourite historical fiction that you've read if you're a reader of the genre and if not I hope that you can get something out of these recommendations that I'm giving you. So we're going to start off with probably the most well known out of the bunch and a book that I absolutely adore and have mentioned before on this channel and it is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This I feel like doesn't really need much of an explanation. This book is absolutely everywhere and has been for quite a few years now but this is one of my favourite books of all time. We are obviously following Evelyn Hugo who is this Hollywood actress and in the present time she is an old woman but we follow her life story essentially through her telling her story to this reporter journalist called Monique. Monique isn't a necessarily well-known journalist but Evelyn picks her specifically and Monique doesn't really know why that does come out in the end but anyway yes so Monique is writing Evelyn's life story and it's kind of told through her seven husbands. That's what people want to know about. Evelyn's never really shared much about her life before until now and it is just absolutely outstanding. I absolutely adore this book. It's so full of glamour. It's also full of scandal and it's just the best kind of drama. I really really adore this book. I don't want to spoil this for you. I feel like there is a major aspect of this book that most people probably do know but I'm not going to say it because when I first read it it was such a surprise to me that if I had had that spoiled for me it wouldn't have had that same effect so I'm not going to say it but there are certain characters in this book that I absolutely adore, certain relationships in this book that I absolutely adore and the whole thing is just incredible. If you haven't read this I would absolutely implore you to do so. It is such a good time and it's also heartbreaking so if you're looking for a book that's going to make you cry this one might just do the trick. This is the only book out of the lot as well that I have actually tabbed. I've read this book multiple times. This is the outcome of that. There are quite a few times in there. I probably would read it again and add even more but yes this is an absolutely incredible book and one of my favourites of all time. The next book is one that I would actually recommend to fans of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and it is City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. This one is set during the 1940s primarily and we're following this young woman called Vivian who as a character very much reminds me of Evelyn from The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo so that's where I think if you enjoyed her character then you might enjoy Vivian in this one. We are following Vivian and we experience her older and her looking back on her life and when she was younger she was kind of sent out of her house she was kicked out of home and sent to live with her aunt who owned this theatre so she is living with her and kind of coming to experience all these different people all these actors models performers dancers all sorts and she starts to design the costumes because she's a really good seamstress so she starts to make and design the costumes and this one is also full of complete scandal she kind of becomes a bit of a socialite and she meets these people gets herself into all kinds of situations and quite a bit of trouble but I absolutely adored this book I feel like this one's a bit of a slower one to get into but once you're in it is absolutely fantastic and again this is another favorite book of all time for me I really really loved this one and again we kind of had a little bit of a not necessarily a plot twist but certain people involved in certain things and certain plot choices towards the end that kind of took me by surprise but they weren't necessarily like major plot twists just certain little surprises throughout which I thought was really really good so yeah I would absolutely recommend this one especially if you're a fan of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Next up is a book that I read really recently but has become a favourite of all time and it is Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson. This one follows present day as well as the past. We are following these two siblings and they are learning about their mother's life story after she's died. 
So Eleanor Bennett has basically provided a voice recording of her telling the story of her life and they are hearing it for the first time after she's died. And this book, oh, it was so incredible, so sad, so heartbreaking. And the stuff that Eleanor had to go through was just absolutely insane. We start off in Trinidad. That's where Eleanor was born. And then she makes her way to the United States. And we kind of go through her journey, what happened and how she got to where she was by the end of her life. It is wild. It is absolutely insane what happens in this book. And so many of the characters in this were just remarkable. I loved the characterizations in this. The character development was so, so incredible. I really loved it. And there is also a slight murder mystery involved in this too. It's not, it doesn't take up the bulk of the book, but something does happen. And then there, obviously a murder happens. And then there is this kind of mystery element that does get revealed by the end. It doesn't take up, like I said, the majority of the story, but it is like a fun little extra part to the novel. This one is just absolutely incredible. I really really loved it and like I said I think if you are someone who loves reading good characters and good character development if you're more of a character driven person while this has got very good plot the characters are incredible in this so I would recommend that you pick this one up. Next up we have got Next Year in Havana by Chanel Cleeton. This book I remember reading so vividly. The reading experience of this one is just one I look back on really fondly. I remember it so, so clearly, and I really, really love this one. This one follows two timelines again, and we are following Elisa in the 1950s onwards and her granddaughter Marisol. So Marisol is kind of looking back on her family roots. She is Cuban-American. She's looking back and goes to Cuba herself to kind of learn more about her grandma. And so we are kind of going between the two. So Elisa's family were quite well off and they were kind of in high society in Havana in the 1950s. And they had to leave to America due to the revolution. So she is thrown into a completely new world. But before that, she falls in love with someone that she shouldn't, let's just say. And it's absolutely heartbreaking. It's so, so incredible though. It's just it does really, really pull at the heartstrings. She has to leave Cuba, leave this man that she has fallen in love with and essentially set herself up a whole new life in the States. But like I say, we also follow Marisol who is trying to establish certain things and certain roots. And while she is in Cuba, she finds out so much about her family, so much about her grandmother. And it's so nice to go backwards and forwards to kind of see how things were back then when Elisa was younger and then see Marisol obviously in these same places kind of learning about this whole new different person that her grandmother was because she went from being part of this wealthy family in high society to an immigrant in the United States and her life drastically changed. So like I said this is a love story, it is also very heartbreaking but it's also a, a story about family and finding your roots and it is just absolutely wonderful and I would recommend this one highly. I really really loved it. Next up a book that I have spoken about on this channel before because it's one of my absolute favourites and it is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This one is set from the 1950s through to the 90s and it is following these two twin sisters and the themes of this are essentially about race and colorism while there is a lot more to it and there are a lot more themes throughout i'd say those are the main ones and i just found this so so interesting because we are following these two twins who run away from their hometown and their hometown is a town that becomes progressively whiter they want to become as white as possible so these two girls while they are black they can pass as white. So one of the twins, once they run away, passes as a white woman and one of the twins lives her life as a black woman. And we see both of their lives and how things have turned out for them based on that decision that they made back when they ran away when they were younger. And it is absolutely incredible. We also follow their daughters in this and their lives do intersect and it's so interesting because they're obviously cousins yet they don't know. So everything kind of comes to light eventually and 
we come to understand why certain decisions were made and it's just absolutely fantastic and again I would highly highly recommend this one so next we have got Home Going by Yar Jesse. This book is absolutely incredible. It is a generational story and we are following loads and loads of generations. I think there's about eight generations in this. And it's essentially in starting off in Ghana, there are these two sisters and on the back it says, two sisters with very different destinies. So it says one sold into slavery, the other a slave trader's wife, and then it kind of branches off from there so each chapter is a new person and so it's kind of a bit like a collection of short stories but not because they do all tie together but then we eventually get to present day so we see all the descendants of both of these sisters and it is so so incredible I loved the concept of this I love a multi-generational story and the fact that this one goes back so far just makes it so so incredible i absolutely loved it i read this in one day because i loved it that much i just flew through it and i needed to know each person's individual story it was just absolutely fantastic and again i keep saying it but highly highly recommend this one i think this is one that everyone should read and everyone would enjoy so the final two are two that i don't have with me physically one i haven't bought yet and the other is being passed around in my family because we have all enjoyed it. So that one is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This one is set during World War II and we are following these two sisters. And one is like a, a mother and a housewife and the other is a little bit more rebellious, shall we say. So the woman who is the housewife, her husband goes off to war and it's essentially following her and her daughter and everything that happens there and so much happens so much goes on and she is so strong in what she has to deal with and go through and then Isabel who is the younger sister she is essentially doing all that she can to help in the war effort and so we see these com two completely different perspectives and stories yet they're both so heartbreaking I cried like a baby reading this book. The last 30 pages of this had me sobbing. I didn't really know what to expect. I feel like set during the time that it was, you feel like that there is going to be an element of sadness. Set during World War II, there is going to be an element of sadness there. But this, I just wasn't prepared. It was so sad, so, so upsetting but absolutely incredible. I loved it so, so much. I don't particularly enjoy stories set during the war, um, but to me about this one was just absolutely remarkable. I loved it so much. And the final book that I'm gonna to talk to you about is Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. This one is another one that's set in the 1950s. So I feel like 1950s historical fiction is where it's at for me, it seems, based on this video. I'd never really thought about that before, but it seems like that is a decade that I seem to enjoy reading about. Anyway, this book is a young adult novel and it is following this girl called Lily and she is a Chinese American and she is a lesbian. Her and this girl called Kathleen at school become very close and it's such a lovely story between these two but this is obviously set at a time where that wasn't seen to be okay so it's very dangerous for these two girls. They end up going to this place called the Telegraph Club which is a lesbian bar and they meet all sorts of people there. There's definitely a sort of found family aspect to this which I absolutely love but the love story between these two girls is so beautiful I absolutely loved it but then there is also talks of the red scare and deportation there's all sorts of things going on in here we also follow the story of Lily's parents so we're going back even further than the 50s which I also really enjoyed not quite as much as obviously Lily's storyline but yes this one is just absolutely lovely I feel like I love this one more for the romance but it's still historical so I had to recommend so those are my favourite historical fiction novels. As I said at the start of this video, I would love it if you could comment down below your favourite so I can add some more historical fiction to my TBR list. But that is it from me today. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, I would love it if you could like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye!